ordained and licensed preacher on fire for God, full of the Holy Ghost and fire, Brother Patrick Williams. Would y'all give my brother a hand as he comes up here to take the microphone to share the word of the Lord tonight? I know we've got a, a belly full of fire from the Lord. Amen. God bless you. forth, Lord, that your words come forth, your desires, your plans, God, yes. and Lord, that, that, that our, we are edified, God, this church is edified, this body edified, God, and we're able to go out, God, to, to deliver the word, to be examples of God, of who you called us to be, Father God, I just thank you for this day, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. 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 amen, amen, praise the Lord, glory to God, my brother asked me to preach, and uh, I always told God, if you open that door up, I'm going to walk through it because there's so many times I was spinning my wheels in my life not doing anything for God. Yes, and amen. those times are behind me. It's time to press forward. And uh, as you were saying, brother, we, we need to be bold. Amen. And, and not just on our job site, but wherever God's called us, we got to be bold because we'll never be effective for yes. God yes. unless we're willing to obey His voice. And so many people in the church today, amen. they're saved. they got the Spirit of God in them, but they're, they're walking in fear not. Uh, being led by God and not uh, walking in the, the power of God yes. and, and things aren't being accomplished that God wants accomplished because they're walking in fear we can't be like that. Right. So many times in my life I said no to God because I doubted God. I doubted who I was because I was listening to the voice of the enemy yes, and I'm not going to give glory to the enemy because if, it, if he could control me, if he could lead me to where he wanted me, I That's wouldn't right. be standing here right That's now. Right. That's right. Right. That's right. Hallelujah. Yes sir. But what y'all were talking about earlier, brother, what you were talking about, brother, we need to be bold and we need to check our motives. Yes. Because there's a lot of people naming the name of Jesus. They're, 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 they have a form of godliness, but they're denying the power of God in their life because their motives aren't right. right. They're right. right. man. Right. And, so, and even it goes back to the Old Testament. You look at the, the false prophets. They, they, were, they were speaking lies to the people. Yes. And the same thing that they were doing then, they're doing now. You look out into the, the church world and people are, are preaching part of the truth, but That's part right. of the truth isn't going to save us. No. It's going to take the whole truth right. of the word of God. That means we got to surrender. Yep. We preach the gospel, yes. but we leave repentance out until you let yeah. go of the things oh, that yeah. hinder us Amen. and they draw us Amen. back will never be effective. That's it, brother. I'm going to start out in Galatians. All right. Chapter 1. Yes, sir. Galatians chapter 1. Verse 1. Verse 1. See, in Galatians, they, they, they started out right, but they started allowing things to come in to hinder them, to keep them from walking in the plans of God. Yes. And, and Paul's trying to set them straight right here. Amen. Let's go to... Uh, Galatians chapter 1, verse, let's start at 9. As we said before, so say not I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached to me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Y'all can be seated. Let's go back to 10. For do I now persuade men or God? For do I seek or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. I'm here to tell you guys, God's called us, He's anointed us, He's put gifts in us. And he wants us to be bold in the, uh, the power of the Holy Spirit because if the power of the Holy Spirit don't go behind you, yes. and if you are not led by the Spirit of God, if you're not doing it with the right motives that God's called us to do, we'll never see change in this community right. and, and, and in this church because God's called us to have that boldness. Yes, man. Because guess what, church? When I was in those dark places, when I was by myself, and when, when I thought that God had left me, and when I thought... That there was no place for me in the kingdom of God. It was God who called me. It was God who put his spirit in me. It was God that reminded me of who he was. And if God was willing to do that for my life, how can I not be willing to stand on the truth of the word of God and be used by God? Because yeah. it was God that was with me. When everybody else walked away, it was God that yeah. showed me his love and his power and that he yeah. wanted to use me. Yeah. Yeah. So we got to have that hunger to be obedient to God because there's so many people in the church today that got ulterior motives. They're doing it for what they can get. Uh, power, money, yes. and, and motives that, that, that'll never satisfy you. What does the word of God say that that uh 
they pierce themselves with many sorrows because they chased after money. Chased so after many money. people yeah. are motivated by money and being seen. Right. And they're, yeah. they're not walking in the power and the authority of Amen. Jesus Christ. Right. 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 Let's go to Micah, chapter 3, 5 through 8. As I was reading the Word of God, I say this a lot. It all comes into agreement. What it was going on back then was going on in the new church that, that people have motives that aren't right. And we've got to have the Spirit of God in us leading us and giving us that strength and that unction to be obedient to God. Glory to God. I have a little trouble with the minor prophets. They uh, they hide themselves a little bit. Do a little bit of books here. Yeah. <laughs> Micah chapter 3, 5 through 8. Micah chapter 3, 5 through 8. Thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people err, that bite with their teeth and cry peace. And he that putteth not into the putteth putteth not into their mouths, they even prepare war against him. Therefore night shall be unto you that ye shall not have a vision, and it shall be dark unto you, and ye shall not divine. And the sun shall go down over the prophets, and the day shall be dark over them. Then shall the seers be ashamed, and the diviners confounded. They shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer of God. I'm going to stop right there. That's what you hear today. So many people preaching a Jesus that can't save. They're preaching a gospel that can't save because I hear, I've been to these churches where you see the, the smoke and the, and, and the skinny jeans and all these things. And, and every message that I hear, they preach part of the truth, but it's all about what God can do for them and how God can make their life better and how God will deliver. And yes, God will deliver, but you can't make blanket statements and say that God's going to deliver everybody no. and that God's going to, and everybody's going to heaven and God's going to make a way for everybody until we all individually get uh, to a point in our walk with God that Jesus Christ, you're first, and I'm going to follow you until the end. Like I was talking with Brother Chad outside. Uh, the parable with the man with the talents. Yeah. You know, he gave one one talent. He gave okay. another five and another ten. And, and the yeah. man that had one that sat on it that wouldn't use what God had for him yeah. didn't accomplish nothing in his life. He might have said a prayer one time in his life and got to know who Jesus was, but he didn't use the gifts that God put in him right. because of fear and doubt. And it says the, the coward will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's not a time today. To doubt God, we gotta go forth, and like my brother was saying, no matter where you at, behind the pulpit, at our jobs, we gotta represent Jesus. And I'm ashamed to say, so many times in my life, I would talk about God, but I had things in my life that God wasn't pleased with, and it's not about being perfect. It's not about being perfect, but where's your heart at? I can't use an excuse that nobody's perfect. God's, God knows my heart, and there's so many people saying that. Because their heart's not truly surrendered. And it's a mask. And yeah. until we get to the point to where Jesus Christ is first. Yeah. Man, we'll never yeah. see the power of God. That's hey, right. man. You know, I'm not where God right. is going to take me. But thank God I'm not where I'm at. And I can see yeah. growth yeah. in my life. Because the word of God, that said, it says yeah. Jesus is that vine, right? Yeah. And we're the branches. Come on. Right. Come we're on. sprouting right. forth from God. Yeah. Right? And God is the... The husband in the yes, garden. That's right. That's right. And he's pruning us. Yes. And God ain't asking for big old fruit. He's asking just give me a little bit of fruit. That's because it. the branch that bears fruit, he's going to cut it. Yes. And you're going to bear more fruit. That's you're going to go deeper when you walk with God. Yes. Don't let us be like those that are just claiming the name of Jesus. Coming to church. Showing up. Yeah. And not don't truly have it settled in our hearts that Jesus Christ, no matter what, you're first. Right, my right. Mom. Because right. that's what's going to happen. Right. There's going to be a lot of disappointed people on the day of judgment. Thanking oh, that they can just... Perform a checklist for God. They can show up to the to the church events and just give their time. But God's not looking for sacrifices. He's looking for obedience. Yeah. Yeah. Not in front of all the people. Yeah. Because I can look good all day yeah. in front of everybody. I can put on a smile and talk about Jesus. But what am I doing when I'm behind closed doors? Yeah. When nobody else is looking, is my heart still for the lost? Because right. I can look like I want to help people, you know, in front of others. I can, yeah. I can pick people up. I can do things. But if I don't truly want to see people saved, because it ain't about Patrick Williams. God saved me, yes, but it ain't about me just sitting in salvation right. and not being used by God, because there's people like we've been talking about tonight, lost on drugs. I was in those dark places yeah. thinking that yeah. it was too late for me. God couldn't deliver me. Yeah. God couldn't set me free. And I want to be that yeah. example when someone looks at my yeah. life that God can set free, yeah. that God can deliver, yeah. that He is the God of the Bible. And so many people are discounting the miracles of God, man. If we'll just stand on the power of God, yeah. Yeah. and 
believe and be obedient because it ain't about me or my name getting out there. It's about Jesus Christ and the people that he loves. And that's how you know by the love that they have for one another. That's how Jesus said you'll know they're my disciples. You can't fake that. I've seen so many people put on that, that religious face, that religious a suit and just go about naming the name. There was no power in their life. I talked to this old man, and he was in the Methodist church for years. He's dead and gone now, and I'm not his judge. I don't know where he went, but I asked him, yeah. you seem so religious. You, talk, you, you say you know God, but you never pick up your Bible. And he said, you know what he said? I read it already, but I need to pick it up for again. Wow. we got to have a hunger for God. Wow. We can't take the things of God lightly. You can't exalt yourself and expect God to be proud of you. He said those who humble themselves... Guess what? He's going to exalt. Yeah. And those that exalt themselves, he's going to humble. Yeah. You know, God sees when nobody else is looking at right. I'm just so thankful that God Amen. brought me here to this Amen. church Amen. because Amen. I see the power yes. of God. Glory. And I've been to so many houses. Yes. And, it's, and it's not this building. It's us. We're the Amen. church. Amen. We're Amen. Yes. You know, we've got to be that example. Yes. We are the church. Yes. We bring church to the world. Yes. And it's yeah. okay to invite people in that school. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's a building. It's us. Amen. People need yeah. to see the power of God in us. Amen. Yeah. Because I'm not here today because of coincidence, because of good luck. No. That's what the world would chalk it out to. He just turned over a new leaf. It took the power of God to get me off alcohol. It took the power of God to take anger and unforgiveness and doubt out of my life. It took the power of God. And God could have done it a lot sooner. So if you're not where God wants you today in your walk, don't worry. God put a uh, breath in your body yes, to give you the opportunity to turn to Him. Yes, sir. But we can't just talk about Jesus. No. Come on. We've got to be willing to surrender. And you look at David and what David did in his life. And you look at Abraham taking some detours. So we don't be discouraged if you're not where God wants you to be. Just have that heart of surrender. And God will meet you right where you're at. It don't take an altar. It can be. It takes wherever you're at. God met me in my bedroom in November when I was dealing with a situation. I allowed the voice of the enemy to come in and to cause me to doubt God and to turn to something that will never satisfy. What does God call sin? Fleeting pleasures. It's there for a moment. Yes, I had fun with my buddies when that when that grill got fired up and the beer started uh, the top started cracking open, but I was left empty the, the next day. That's Jesus right. said, I'm a living water. Yeah. I'll always satisfy you. Yeah. Never thirst again. Yeah. Right. And I can wake up every day with hope because I go through things right I do the things. Right. Just like you preach all the time, brother, just because we're Christians don't mean there's not a target on our back. Don't yeah. mean he, he's coming yeah. even more. Yeah. But hallelujah, greater is he that's in me. Yeah. 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 And you'll see the miracles. You'll yeah. see. Family delivered, man. God has worked so many miracles in my life. And if He done it then, He's gonna do it now. Yeah, yeah. But God, but, but the enemy wants us to believe that God's washed His hands of us. No, no. I'm here to tell you today, prodigal, whoever you are, that you're not where God wants you to be. God, Come see, on. see, people send themselves to hell. They they yes, climb bro. over the gospel. They climb over the preacher. It's not. It, it's hard to go to hell because you got to resist the spirit of God. You got to deny Come God. On. So many times I was. I was, I was double-minded. I was I had a divided yes. heart, and I could have died. And so I could tell you, break after break, yes. alcohol and ball. But yes. God delivered me because right. he knew I'd be here today, and I don't have to look back. I don't have to, to look, listen to the voice of the enemy. You don't have to listen to the voice. The enemy cannot make you not obey God. That's right. He can't. He can't. He, his power is limited. He's already defeated. Yes, yes, but he got yes. me because I believe the lie. Yes. The only way the enemy can get you to, to, to not walk in the plans of God is to, to doubt the word of God. Jesus yes. said, man, you've got to have faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God because there's circumstances in our life that's going to tell us that God's done with you. There's no yes. way out. Yes. This ain't gonna, you're not going to overcome this. But we look at the circumstances. It, it's just simple gospel. Remember when Peter was on the water? He was walking towards yes. Jesus. He was on that water, but he yes. looked away. And so many times the enemy wants us to look away yes. because he can hinder us and keep us from touching other people's lives. Oh, yes. And when we're walking on the water and, and the people see that, that's when they'll know that there's a God in heaven. Yes. Yes. And, and, and I've heard this so many times from mighty men of God. We're not responsible for how they respond. Right. We're just responsible for living out the truth, right. obeying the gospel, yes. and being who God's called us yes. to be. Yes. And I believe, brother, I see the work in, in this house and, and, yes. and, 
and everybody here how God's moving and working. Yes. And if we'll just continue to be obedient and yield yes. to the Spirit, it's yes. like a body. That's what me and my brother's talking about. We're yes. a body. That's right. Not everybody's the head, not everybody's the ear, not everybody's the arm. But if you just got the head, you're a crippled body and you That's can't right. be used. But if everybody come continues on. to come yes. together yes. And, and, be, and yield to the Spirit of God, yes. that's Murray. when this community is going to be changed in the body of yes. Because the enemy is discouraging. You know, like we say in the revival, so many people got saved. Yeah. And, but you really don't see the evidence. But if you'll trust God, yes. you got to look at the circumstances. Right. And you'll right. see the miracles of God. Don't look at your family members that, are, right. that, that, that don't love God, that they're, they're walked away from God. Don't allow the enemy right. to get you to look at circumstances. There's so many circumstances. The enemy yes. has been constantly trying to get me to look at. That's it. So I won't walk in the power of God. Right. Because right. he knows once we yield, how yes. many people will be saved. And deliver yes. and, and see the hope of God. Glory to God. Yes. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave, Hallelujah. I'm gonna leave on this uh this last verse that God gave me. You own it. Hallelujah. Man, the God that I, I serve is alive. If I if I had God, if I didn't if I hadn't seen the power of God, I wouldn't be up here. Amen. And I've shared this a lot. You know, I was I was always the guy, you know, I had to see it to believe it. Uh-huh. You can't just tell me something that you've seen a ghost and I'm just going to believe you. Right. Just because of how, how good you can, you know, communicate that to me and how right. sincere you look. I had to, but I've seen the power of God in my life. God has shown me things time and time again yes. Yes. that he is who he says he is. And if we don't have the spirit of God. See, the church is scared of the spirit. You've yeah. got to be led by the spirit. It's yeah. God who yeah. tells Mom. you to yeah. stop. Right. Take a second, go talk to that person. I've got yeah. a word for them. Yeah. And if you'll yield to the Spirit, man, yeah. the people that'll be saved, and it's not necessarily yeah. preaching to, to multitudes of people. It's like my brother said, being yeah. at the place that God has you to be, yeah. that vessel for Him. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And God will raise you up and He'll put you. But He can't take you deeper right. if you're still in second grade, like, right. like I've heard before. Yeah. He can't. Yeah. We're still stuck in the same mindset. Yeah. We're not getting in the Word of God. I love you two yeah. preaching, and I love getting on the internet and, yeah. and seeing things about God, but i got to take time yeah. out of yeah. my day to get in the yeah. Word of God yeah. and to seek God yeah. because yeah. if you marry, yeah. you don't take time to do something for your spouse. It goes against our nature because we want what we want. We want what we're, just because we're born again don't mean we don't live in this temple that wants to do what it wants to do. Wow. That's why the enemy, enemy operates through this flesh. Yeah. But we got Set our heart towards God. It's a decision. I don't wake up every day just praising God. i got to remind myself what God has done for me. Yes. How He's delivered me. Yes. And that's when I say, God, today, this is your day. Whatever you want me to say, I'll yes. say it. And wherever you take me, I'll go. Yes. And I'll say whatever you want me to say. Because you know me. God was with me. Yes. And those jail cells yes. and, and in those vehicles flipped over. And it, it was God that brought me out. I couldn't be dead at all. Because just because I said a prayer and just because I got saved one time when I was 15... Don't mean that that I want to. I wouldn't have went straight to hell. God right. showed me a vision when I overdosed one time, yeah. Yeah. and I was saved. This was years. I got saved when I was fifteen, so I was eighteen or nineteen, and I overdosed. Right. And I, I was at the, the precipice of death. Wow. And God said, "If you keep living like this, this is what's going to happen to you. And this God. is the lie mm. that that you can just receive God at one time in your life, mm. and that." Smooth sailing. You don't have to do nothing. You can live how you want to live, and you're going to make it to the kingdom of God. And God showed me a pit, and I fell into this pit. It was this bottomless pit that the Word of God talks about. And these souls were just coming over this cliff over me, and I looked up, and it was like it was never ending. And thank God I wasn't really there. God was showing me that vision yeah. that if you keep playing games, Patrick, thinking you can party and then come to church and then live one way and talk another way. This is eventually where you're going to be. And it took years. I'm not going to say that I completely turned in, but God's got me to a place now. I want Him and nothing else. Because at the end of this 80 to 100 years, if I'm really blessed, what's that compared to eternity? I want the life that God has for me. I want the promises that Jesus made. You look at Philip. Was it Philip or Dalton Thomas? He said that... uh, Unless I put my hands in the prints of his hands and thrust my head to the side, I won't believe. And Jesus came and showed him. And he said, you believe because you've seen me. But blessed are those who believe that never seen me. I've never physically laid eyes on Christ, but I've seen his power in my life. And I know the mansion that he has prepared for me there. And I want to take as many people as I can with me. And I can't do that by living for passion. I can't do that by living by the flesh. And like I said, the enemy twists it and makes you think that you got to 
to read a checklist. Okay, if you become a Christian, you got to do this, this, and this. No, God's looking at your heart. That's right. That's right. And I'm yeah. talking about Amen. through That's true right. surrender to God. Not just because everybody's watching. Yes. But when you're with God by yourself. Yes, sir. Your heart, God sees that. That's right. Yes, God knows does. deeper. Yes, He does. Than we can ever, he knows us better than we know ourselves. Yes, he and He knows when we're playing games. He knows when we're hiding things. Come on. He said... Those who are justified who bring their works to him so that they can be made wrought in God, that means fixed. But this is the condemnation that, that men love darkness more than light. They don't want to bring it to God because you know what that means? That means I have to give up some things. That means I can't do it the way Patrick wants to do it. Right. And that's the condemnation. Yes. We're already on our way to hell. We were already on our way to hell when I first sinned in my life. Yes, sir. That was enough to send me to hell. Jesus didn't come to condemn us. He came to set us free Amen. so that we can be the vessel so other people can be set free. Right. The world's got this notion that Jesus is coming to condemn them. We're already on our way to hell. It's already set in stone. Yeah. I'm on my way to hell, but through the blood of Jesus Christ, I'm free. Yes. Yeah. And i got a home in heaven. Amen. And it's my duty to step out in faith and not just spin my wheels and sit in the same place and be complacent and sit on the talent that God gave me and think that when he comes back, I could just Amen. give him back what he gave me. Yeah. And thinking everything's going to be all right. It says the cowardly will not inherit the kingdom oh, of God. Oh, and those are some hard words. Yeah. But we got to be bold. He's coming back for a yeah. church without spot, without blemish, that yeah. are bold yeah. to, to not be ashamed. What did he say, brother? He said, if you're ashamed of me and my words, I'll be ashamed before you. Yeah, that's right. In front of my Father in the presence of the angels. That's right. But whoever confesses me before men, I confess you. That's it. I don't care what the world Amen. says. I don't care if they call me hypocrite, holy roller, uh, right. false prophet, false teacher. I'm standing on the Word of God. Yes. Yes. It's yes. all yes. said and done. Yes. Yes. I'm going to stand before the good and sin of Christ. Yes. I'm not standing before the world. Yes. I'm standing before the Jesus. Right. Yes. Right. Me and Jesus. Right. Right. And, I, and, my, and my hope yes. and my heart's desire is for you to say, well done. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Glory to God, because I, I've chased things in the world, relationships, money, right, pleasure. But what God gave me in exchange for that can never compare. Amen. It can never compare to what God has given me. Hope. Amen. And like I said, brother, I've talked to Brother Jeremy. The devil's been attacking that ministry yeah. over and over. But oh, my brother. brother's standing strong. And it's yeah. in those ministries that were tested and tried. And yeah. when God sees that, sees the obedience, when the enemy's coming, God's going to bless it because we believe it. Yes. We speak because we believe. That's what we're doing. That's right. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. I know God's going to do something when the enemy comes like he does. Because he wants to hinder. He don't want. He hates God. He hates everything about God. He hates the people made in the image of God. He wants to take them to hell by the droves. But if we'll stand up, Jesus said, the harvest is plenty, but the labors are few. So pray that the Lord, the harvest will send labors into the harvest. It's time to rise up. To not fear. To not doubt. To be the body that called us, that God called us to be. So that people will know the hope that we got. Come on. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's it. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. Maybe I'll be like a chat one day and just be able to flip, just one flip and be like that. 2 Thessalonians 2, 10. And with all the deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. I'm going to tell you, church, if you love the truth, which is Jesus. That yes. excludes everybody else. That excludes Muhammad, New Age religion, atheism, everything. It excludes everything because it's the truth. But if we're willing to love the truth, no matter what the enemy uses to come against us, because we're coming against a world right now that's full-fledged against the things of God. Yeah. You're, you're a homophobic. Yeah. You preach against come sin. On. You're yeah. a bigot. You're sexist. You're whatever. Right. But are you willing to love the truth deep enough to stand on it when everybody else walks away? Yes, it's just you and Jesus. Are you willing to love the truth? And there's a lot of people who name the name of Jesus, but they don't truly love the truth because they take the Word of God to line it up with their own life. Yeah. Right. But man, if we really love God, I don't care what's in me, God, you, I'm going to use this Word to get my life right, to line right. my life yeah, up with well, the Word. Hey, yeah, well, that's that's right. Right. Yeah, yes, sir. I love you guys, brother. If you got uh, something else, I, I really appreciate it. I love Lord, you, church. Right. I know we continue to be obedient. God's going to use us. Praise the Lord. Preacher, 
getting gooder and gooder. <laughs> Hallelujah. Gooder and gooder, as the old preacher used to say. Hallelujah. I think the words this week confirmed tonight. All the way around, everything just coming together and just in, in unified. Yeah. God yeah. confirming his word. Yeah. And, and for sure, you know, I was thinking as he was preaching that, uh, that was a word that Brother Chris said and Brother Patrick brought it forth that we must surrender. Yeah. The verse that kept popping in my mind was Romans 12. I'm not going to go back and preach anything, but I just want to read that verse. Romans 12, 1 and 2. It says, I beseech you, which means I, I plead with you, I beg you, I, 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 I'm asking you with everything that is within me to, uh, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. What? What does that mean? It means to surrender. Right. It means we must surrender. Uh, to, to present yourselves, your body, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Yeah, when we become born again, when God saves you, when he poured out his grace upon you, his mercy upon you, that's what we are called to do. That's the, the least we can do. When, when everybody else turned their back upon you, when Christ looked down and picked you up out of the mud in the mire when he put his robe upon you and his ring on your finger. Hallelujah. When he killed the fatted calf, when he threw his arms around you, uh, when everybody else turned their back on you, he called you son and he called you daughter. But he went to measure for you in glory. When he said, Father, one day I'm going after them. Hallelujah. When everybody else said, I'm done with you, uh, he said, No. Praise God, they're mine. They're my children. One day I'm going to make up my crown. Surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the only thing He asked for us is to be a a, a reasonable it's our service uh, uh, to be a sacrifice unto Him. To surrender, and, and that's what it means. This means when God needs us to do something in this earth, as Brother Chris was saying, and Brother Chris, what you said earlier, brother, it, it, and you called to be a preacher. You are. You're called just like Brother Patrick's called, just like I'm called, just like a lot of these are called. We're called. We have a mission, a commission, and, and you're called, and it starts. You'll never preach before people like this until you start preaching to one. And if you can't preach without a microphone, you can't preach at all. Because God will start you out preaching to the one. And if you can do that, then you'll go on up. And he'll continue. And God will use you in steps. And I promise you, he'll continue and continue. And before long, it'll just be amazing. And in the same way God will use you as a child of God, he will use And the same way we talk about it all the time, you can't get past second grade until, or get to third grade until you get past second grade. That's what he's talking about. Even in our spiritual gifts, you can't get to that next level until you understand what God's trying to show you on the level you're on now. Amen. We're trying to get to glory to glory, but we must first surrender and get oh, and figure out what God's trying to show us where we are now. But we must surrender right here where we are. Get in the Word of God and do what we're called to do. Be about our Father's business just like the Lord was when Jesus was on this earth. What did he tell his mama? He said, Mother, I must be about my father's business. And that's what you and I are called to do. We need to tell everybody, I'm about my father's business. I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. Hallelujah. I'm in the world, but I'm not connected to the world. The things the world loves, I don't love anymore. Hallelujah. I love what Jesus loves. I love what my father loves. And I'm about my father's business. He said, I ask you to be a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That means it's reasonable, Brother Mike. He's not asking you to do something that, that's too hard for us to do. He's saying that's not too much to ask. My son died for you, gave his life for you, and so it's not too much to ask that I'm asking you to do this one little thing. Right. Amen. Amen. When he told her to cross up the hill after being blistered and beaten and whipped Ooh. and mocked and ridiculed and spit upon and carried and tortured, it's your reasonable service to just do what I ask you to do. Amen. The next verse said, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. 
by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I believe that's what my brother was talking about tonight. Hallelujah. We, you will be bold. Once you do that, once you are not conformed to this world, but you're transformed by the power of God, your mind becomes transformed. You will find out what the will of God is in your life, and you will begin to rise to that occasion. You will begin to rise to that platform. Whatever it is that God has for you, you will begin to be the hands in the church. You will begin to be the feet in the church. You will begin to be the mouth in the church. You will begin to be whatever it is you are called to be. God will begin to raise you up and anoint you and appoint you and and use you like you've never been used before. But first we must surrender. Total surrender. That's what it takes. And, and you must start with one. And the one is putting Jesus first. Just like you said tonight. You've got to put Jesus first. It can't be just coming to church. It can't be just doing good things. Do, being active in the church. It is putting Jesus first. Yes, sir, Brother Bill. Brother Chad, when you surrender to God, the next thing you got to do is be committed. Committed, yes. And if you don't commit yourself to God, there's no use to start to start with. That's right, that's right. If you're fully committed to God, yes. God's going to put the words in your mouth that yes. you need to use that's to right. reach other people. That's right, that's right. Commit yourself to the Lord in all your ways. That's right. Commit yourself to the Lord. You know, a lot of us, we, we commit ourselves to certain things and, and we commit ourselves to our jobs. If a lot of us, and I'm not saying treat the Lord as a job, but I'm saying if you would commit to the Lord the way we do our job. That's right. You know what I'm saying? When you yeah. wake up and you say, oh, Lord, have mercy, I'm going to be late. I, you just you jump in overtime. You do everything. You, you try to please your boss. If we would try to please the Lord, we, we would try to please our boss. Yeah. 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 Because guess what? He is the boss. He is commander-in-chief. It's not a job. It, this is a relationship. He's not called you. You, you can never work your way to heaven. This ain't right. a job, but I'm just right. saying we should. That our works, it will show the love that we have for the Father. Amen. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is a good and acceptable and perfect will of God. He has a perfect will for us, don't he, brother? Amen. Every single one of us in this room. Brother Patrick, he didn't know just a few years ago. He didn't know just a few years ago as he was about to OD and as he was about to, as he had those car wrecks and in jail and everything else, he didn't know that just a couple of years down the road that God was going to have him standing behind the pulpit yeah. preaching the word of the Lord in yeah. all throughout the He didn't know any of that stuff, but God knew that a few years ago. God already knew all that. He knew it before he was even born. Because Jeremiah chapter 1 said, Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. And I sanctified you. And I, oh my God. And I anointed you to be a prophet among the nations. Every single one of you in this room, before you were formed in your mother's womb, God knew you. And God has a purpose and a plan for every single one of you in this room. But it's up to you and I for that plan and that purpose to come to fruition if we surrender. Amen. You see, God has the plan. He's got a perfect will, but it's up to us to surrender and commit and to do what we're called to do. Because we can get out of God's will. God has a plan. He has a destiny, as some people like to call it, your destiny. But that destiny can come to fruition or it won't come to fruition. If you get outside of God's will, it won't happen. And it, it, will, it will just go on down the road. But if you get in God's center of God's will, I promise you, you will walk in breakthrough, you will walk in blessing, and you will begin to see the kingdom of God come down in your life, and you will begin to see signs and miracles and wonders. You'll begin to see people getting saved and healed and delivered, all because you chose. You made a decision. That's what it is. Say to God, it's a decision that we make. Every single one of us in this room is a decision that we make. 
every single day that as for me and mine, we're going to serve the Lord. Yes. Amen. And because you choose to do that, it's going to affect those around you. Amen. Amen. How many believes that? Yes. It's going to affect those around you. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. You know what? And that's that's the true ladder of success. Uh, I've said it before. The uh, over in America here in the Western civilization, we we look at success as working a nine to five job, retiring by by whatever age. What's the age now? Seventy. Yeah, that's about right. Seventy. Somebody said seventy. That probably yeah, probably won't even be seventy by the time we get ready to retire. Probably ninety. <laughs> 75, I wouldn't doubt that. Well, it used to be 65, didn't it? Used to be 60, 65. Yeah, now they want you to work till you die. But uh, anyway, we, we look at the ladder of success, working that until you retire. And you get the camper and travel all around the world. And you know what I mean? Spending time with family, that's the ladder of success over here. But the true ladder of success is having that right relationship yes. with God. Yes. Walking in the center of God's will. Seeing the power of God in your life. Seeing the power of God come down in your family. Being so close to God that you can call on Him and the Lord shows up in your life. Yes. It's having God as your Abba. What is Abba? It's your daddy. Yes. Having God as your daddy. Amen and knowing that you can call on Him any time, day or night. And God will show up for you. Because who what? What daddy will not show up for his children? If we as earthly fathers will show up and know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more will our heavenly father? Hallelujah. I'm going to hush before I start preaching. Right? What a word tonight. Praise yeah. the Lord. What a word. Brother Patrick, thank you, my brother, for bringing that word from the Lord. Hallelujah. I thank God. I thank God. Brother Chris, you get ready. You 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 getting ready to get up here, brother. You getting ready to get up here and share a word. I'm telling you, you getting ready. Hallelujah. He's got it. He's got it. He got the anointing. Praise the Lord. Praise God. All right. Well, if anybody you got any prayer requests to our any needs you need prayer for tonight, we'd love to pray with you. Hallelujah. If you got something you need prayer for tonight.